Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for being here as always and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Ology. This is a video that I've wanted to make for quite some time, but uh, as you guys know, I want to make this channel and this community of Star Wars ramblings to be a all-inclusive uh, sort of thing. I want everyone to feel welcome here and I don't want to be a voice of negativity in the fandom. The entire reason why I started this channel, the strongest, biggest reason why I wanted to make this channel is I wanted to be a positive voice in the fandom. I wanted to make people feel good about loving Star Wars. I wanted to make the community a little bit better than it already is. So with that being said, I want to make this monologue as a service to the people that might be having certain issues with certain bits of any of the films or any of the books or any of the comics or whatever in the Star Wars universe, legends, canon, anything. And that is to let go of that logical part of your brain. Let go of that left brain that is demanding to know how the mechanics work of certain things. Because in my opinion, I have found that since I've come to that understanding, probably about, I would say, about season four of the Clone Wars, I've enjoyed the fandom so much more. I've in, My personal fandom has grown so much because I've let go of my need for logic in the Star Wars universe. The basic point of this is that putting logic in Star Wars will always end in annoyance and frustration in the endeavors that the creatives have put forth. You will always be more annoyed at what they didn't explain rather than enjoying what they did explain or enjoying the effort of figuring out what they were trying to say. Off the top of my head, I am literally staring at just my Audacity window, which is the only window open on any of the monitors on my PC. I haven't thought about any of this, and I can come up with probably around a dozen moments in Star Wars where logic is thrown completely out the window. We'll start off with Episode 8, because, well, that's what inspired, or rather the discourse around The Last Jedi is what inspired me to want to make this type of video. Uh, let's go with, huh, there's quite a few of them. Let's go with the time when the uh, turbo laser blasts from the Supremacy were arcing when there's no gravity in space. And they're also energy weapons, so how does that work? Also in The Last Jedi, the Holdo Maneuver, why don't they just strap hyperdrive engines to asteroids all the time? Never mind that that was also brought up during the Clone Wars and brought up a couple of different times with varying degrees of destructiveness in Legends continuity. Let's go back to Episode 7. So Han Solo and Chewbacca just happen to be flying right past Jakku, right as Rey and Finn are taking off in the Falcon? Really? How do they manage to get from the main portion of Starkiller Base to the Thermal Oscillator portion of Starkiller Base so quickly? Episode 6. Obviously, where did... The Ewoks learn how to fight stormtroopers so well, and when did plasteel armor, like the stormtroopers, uh, become incredibly vulnerable to a simple stick to the head? Why didn't Luke just take Leia's advice and run far away? He didn't do anything in that throne room that led towards the Alliance's victory. He didn't need to be there. In fact, he probably would have been more meaningful to the war effort by being in an X-Wing or participating in the ground battle. Episode 5. Asteroids are never that close together in an asteroid belt. Ever. Because if they were that close together, they would have pulverized each other into dust. That's how physics works. Why did the Imperials allow Lando to allow Chewbacca to rebuild C-3PO? There's absolutely no reason for him for them to be allowed to do that. Episode 4. Here's a bucket load of them. The Death Star, which is 190 kilometers in diameter, only has like 30 TIE Fighters to launch? Really? Also, how does Luke Skywalker know how to fly what is effectively an F-22 Raptor after flying a crop duster? They're not the same type of machinery. 
So the droids just happen to land in the same general vicinity of the planet where the Chosen One is. Also, they happen to fall out of a ship that also is carrying the long lost sister of the said Chosen One while being chased by the father of both of those people. <laughs> if Ben is so powerful in the Force, how does he not sense that Leia needs help? Why isn't he already on his way to Luke to get him? Down to episode three. Wait, so does R2 just kind of accept the fact that Anakin is mass murdering kids? And that's not how missiles work in space. If you're lighter, you're more maneuverable in space. That's how it works. You don't get to just outrun or outmaneuver a missile. Where did all that oil come from that was inside of R2? Why is he just carrying around a few dozen gallons of oil inside of his tin can? Why wouldn't the clones actually make sure that General Kenobi was dead? Down to episode two. Why is Padme so accepting of the fact that Anakin just slaughtered an entire settlement of uh, native people on Tatooine? If the bond between Obi-Wan and Anakin is so strong, how does Obi-Wan not realize that there's something wrong with Anakin? Why is Jar Jar Binks a frickin' representative in the Senate? Down to episode one. How does Anakin's engines not rip apart during the extended pod race scene? That's not how physics work, again. Why doesn't Obi-Wan use his force speed that he clearly shows at the beginning of the movie, near the end of the movie, during the Duel of the Fates? Why doesn't Maul just force push Obi-Wan while he's holding onto that weird handle power nodule thing down that shaft? Why don't they just hit the emitters of the force fields with their lightsabers? as opposed to trying to hit the actual fields themselves with their lightsabers. In fact, while we're on the topic of lightsaber fights, why don't Jedi and Sith just turn off each other's lightsabers willy-nilly, or force kick each other in the crotch for that matter? My point is, Star Wars has never cared about logic. Don't worry about the physics of things. Don't worry about why things work the way they do. It's space magic. You have the Force, which is actual space magic, and then you have the science of Star Wars, which is also space magic. It's not referred to as such in-universe, but there's nothing in the Star Wars films, at least, that really cares too much to explain why things work the way they do. Sure, you got metachlorians, but eh, that's a whole nother tangent. Anyways, my point with this video is to let you know that if you have a problem with something in Star Wars because it doesn't seem logical or it doesn't seem to make the most amount of sense, that's totally fine. Just understand that Star Wars has never cared about making sense. Or rather, the creators that make Star Wars have never been interested in making sure that it makes sense. If it looks cool, it is. If it's necessary for the story, that's what happens. If that's the way it happens in the movie, then that's the way it happens in the world of Star Wars. And for me, like I said at the top of the video, this has been so freeing of for me. I used to be that guy who would get hung up on stupid little things as, during the prequels, during the original trilogy, that just didn't make any sense. And I don't know why, I can't even remember the specific episode, but I was sitting there watching the Clone Wars and it clicked that nothing in Star Wars makes sense. It is meant to be fantastical. It is meant to not need explaining. What you're supposed to be concentrating on, at least in my opinion, is the characters and the overarching story and the messages that are trying to be conveyed to you through the story. At least to me, that's what attracts me so much to Star Wars. Cool visuals and deep life lessons. And I never want to get hung up on physics issues or continuity issues ever again. Anyways, thank you for listening to me ramble on about a very small, ridiculous little thing to be irked about. And I do hope that this video helped you if you've ever had that issue with logic being put into Star Wars. I hope that your next viewing of your least favorite film, uh, no matter which film that is, is a little bit more enjoyable if you just let go and allow yourself to be taken away by the force of the story. 
Thank you guys as always for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like on that. If you're not subscribed already, do so. Hit that bell as well for notifications. You guys can find links down in the description below that include my personal Twitter page, the Twitch channel page where we stream live on Sundays, as well as uh, the links to the podcast that I co-host, Star Cabal Podcast. Thank you guys as always. May the force be with you. Take care.